Hi everybody, so my name is Jen Barbin. I'm currently um, a permanent teacher at Mother Teresa Catholic High School in London and I teach math, science, and religion. I graduated from Altos Teachers College in 2015. So today I'll be talking to you about what my job hunting process was like um, right after graduation. So for me it was a little bit easier because I knew that I wanted to get right into my local school board. Um, a lot of people like to take the route where they go teach abroad and that would require a little bit more organization. Um, but for me, it was just a matter of waiting for the supply list to open up and then applying. So usually the supply lists open up one or two times at a designated time in the year. Um, I knew after I graduated in May that my school board didn't open up until July or even in the fall. So what I actually did is I called my HR office and I set up an inter informational interview with them. So basically, I went in and I asked my questions to them. Um, and it's kind of a way of putting yourself out there and them getting to know you. Um, from that, I actually got an interview. So I was lucky enough to get an interview kind of before the supply list opened. Um, and that was in May, and then I was hired for the next upcoming year. If anybody's watching this and they're thinking, you know, I'm not from London and I want to work in London, so I might not know anybody, um, you're not really at a disadvantage. Um, it's just a matter of going out there and making connections so that you do get to know people. Um, so when you're in a school for a supply job, make sure you're going down to that principal and introducing yourself. So a little bit about my path. Um, I was hired for, right after I graduated, I was hired right onto the supply list and I supplied that full, first full year with an LTO um, in March. And then I had an LTO for the entire second year um, and then I got permanent my third year, and that was all just because of networking, um, putting myself out there, and getting involved where I could. So I don't want you guys to be discouraged about um, not being able to find a job as a teacher. I remember during my entire year, um, there was always that messaging to us that it's going to be so hard to find a job. Um, nobody hires teachers anymore. There's this huge wait list. You know, you hear that from family, friends, people outside of the field, and it can be really discouraging. Um, for me, when I heard that, I took it as a challenge. I'm a very competitive person and I went for it and it worked out for me. I think even now you guys are in an even better position than I was. Um, I'm seeing it now. Young people are getting hired very quickly. There's so many openings. I keep an eye on postings very closely and there's always postings going out. Um, so hopefully this is not the first time you've heard it, but there are jobs out there for teachers and it is getting a lot better than it has been. So Go for it, stick with it, and you'll be successful. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about uh, certain resources that I found very helpful in my early teaching career. So the first one is networking. Uh, networking with principals and administration is huge. So one little tip that I always kind of use that I can pass on to you guys is when you're a supply teacher, make sure you're introducing yourself to the principal. So what I always did, first day in a new school, I would go into the principal's office and introduce myself. Um, and if there was something, um, some piece of information that I could bring up that wasn't too forced or um, obvious that I was networking, I would bring that up as well. It would just be a very short conversation. Then I made sure actually that I didn't give them my card until the second time I was at the school. So the reason why I did this was it was an excuse to see them a second time and kind of solidify who I was to them. If I did it all the first time, that might be the only time they see me and then they might forget about me. So if you wait until that second time, it's just kind of a, an extra, this is who I am, remember me, and it, it really stays with them in their mind. So you have to remember that teachers are also very helpful and it's really important to network with various teachers that you meet. Um, some very helpful things that I've used teachers for, um, I know during my placements, I didn't have the opportunity to see the startup of a classroom. So during my second year, um, I asked a teacher if I could sit in on their class for the first day and see how they started up their classroom. That was a very helpful resource um, that I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't have that good relationship with the teachers that I met. Um, teachers are also very helpful. They, they've gone through um, the process that we're all starting. So they know the ins and outs, things you don't learn in teacher's college, that sort of thing. Um, for example, when you start to get your first permanent lines, um, I had no idea, but in our school board, you have to send a letter to the board office saying that you are interested in increasing 
your amount of classes before you can actually get an extra class added to your schedule. So if I hadn't talked to teachers, I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have sent the letter. I would have applied to increase and get more lines of classes and I wouldn't have gotten them. So it's very important that you know, you're talking to the teachers, they know best, they're gonna give you really good insight for your career early on. So some other important resources are the union and your contract, both the occasional contract and the permanent teacher's contract. So when you guys are hired as occasional teachers, I really recommend that you, you read your contract through. Um, I know it's very long, but uh, there's some very helpful information on there just so that you know what you're entitled to and you know how you should be treated. Um, there's a lot of things in there that I didn't know about until kind of later on and I wish I read it early. Uh, so take a summer and do that. Also, don't be afraid to call your union. Um, your union is there for you. I know it can be a scary thing. Um, I do recommend if you do call the union, start the conversation with just, you know, I want to keep everything that is said just between us so that it doesn't get passed down to any administrators or teachers. Okay, so the next point that I'm going to talk about is what are the keys to success in your career that I could kind of tell you guys moving forward. So you want to first and foremost make connections and network with people. That is going to get you far in your career, whether it is advancing in your job or just you know, you're in a job and you need help um, lesson planning or getting resources for a course you've never taught. Definitely when you're in the schools that you work at, try and get involved as much as you can. So, you know, coaching a team or leading a club really goes a long way. People notice that and if anything, you're going to gain experiences that you can then talk about and reference in an interview. So even if you're at a school and the administrator or the teachers, you know, they don't notice, maybe they're kind of prone to sitting in their office all day and not getting involved, still keep plugging away because you're going to have experiences that you can talk about in an interview. Uh, some advice for being a supply teacher. So when you are a supply teacher, your relationship with the students is probably the most important thing. Teachers always, the second day after supply teacher has been in, they always ask their class, how was that teacher? And if you can get your students to say, oh, they're awesome, that's going to go a long way. The teacher's going to hear that. She's going to pass your name along to somebody else. It's going to get to the administration. Word will get out and that will look excellent on you. If I can kind of give you one piece of advice, have control, but also be easygoing and fun when you're a supply teacher. So when you start um, applying to jobs, make sure that you are absolutely applying for everything and anything that you think you might be interested in. The reason why I say that is because even if you don't get the job, at least you had, you know, that hour of an interview of networking yourself to some contact on the other side. So you can walk out of there knowing that you just kind of, you know, advertise yourself to someone who might say, hey, you know, I just interviewed this really great candidate. Unfortunately, I couldn't hire them. Maybe there was someone more senior than you, but you know what? They might pass your name on to somebody else at a different school. So another key to success that I found very helpful um, is taking AQ courses. So the additional qualification courses are huge to take. Uh, for one thing, they helped me get to the A4 salary grid. Um, I definitely recommend doing that as soon as possible. Get to that highest salary grid. Um, I know for me, you know, as I was out of school longer and longer, I couldn't see myself wanting to go back and take these AQ courses. So I did it right away. I did it the summer after I graduated teacher's college. Um, I did it during the year that I supplied. Um, the year that you supply, you know, you're going to have a prep period and you're not going to have any prep to do, so why not sit there and do an AQ course? Also, think about taking as many AQ courses as you can um, that you are qualified to teach. Then, at the end of the day, you're way more marketable. You can apply for that many more jobs. Um, also, when you get into a building, so for example, myself, when I was hired permanently, and I got my first few lines, I was ecstatic, but I was also at the very bottom of the totem pole. So I knew, you know, as soon as surplus notes came out, I would probably be one of the first to go. But because I have so many teachable subjects now, um, it's very easy for a school to pick me right back up. Because I'm qualified in so many areas, um, if I got surplus from one school, chances are I would be eligible to take a posting at any other school that came up. Um, there's a lot of, I can speak for the high school, so there's a lot of AQ courses that you don't need a university background for. For example, I took a co-op course, and now I can teach co-op, and I didn't need to have taken any co-op courses in university. 
So that was my experience as a, as a new teacher. Um, I hope it was helpful um, and you can take away at least one thing to help further your careers.